All right, folks, welcome back to the Free to Plat series, and we're finally back. We've had a bit of a week off, um, had so much on at work, so I wasn't able to do both accounts, but yeah, we've been back a couple of days now grinding, and actually, technically, this video isn't on the Free to Plat account as such. We're actually editing that as we speak, but because this new video came out, What's Next in Raid, I thought I had to jump on, shelf everything we're doing, and we'll do a little reaction video to that first, and then I'll be releasing the newest Free to Plat series video probably around tonight or tomorrow, just depending on when editing finishes. But uh, yeah, just before we get into this video, there's one small announcement I'd like to make. Now, I've had quite a lot of offers over the last sort of six, seven months from various different games to do sponsorships and things with them. Um, pretty much most of the time I've went on, I've not enjoyed the game and I've said, look, no offense, but I don't really like the game, so I can't promote it. I can't promote something I don't enjoy. But a game called Gemstone Legends actually approached me and I gave it a shot. I've actually been playing for about a month now and I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, so as this isn't sponsored by Gemstone Legends at all, this video, but they do offer a, a similar kind of content creation program, similar to Raid. And I'm going to get involved with it. It seems like a really cool game, a very small development company. They've only got the one game. It's only a handful of people, so they're really cool to work with. Um, but I think you guys will definitely like it. You should definitely check it out. I'll show you a little video of it just now. This is Gemstone Legends, it's an RPG very similar to Raid, developed around the same time except it uses the Puzzle Match 3 mechanic to do the combat system, which is a little confusing at first, but once you realise the depth that it goes into, it's amazing. There's five different Raid bosses right now, all dragons, and they can all join your team afterwards and use a skill specifically against the enemy team, which is really cool. They've got loads of heroes to collect, tons of artifacts, so many different combinations, and the artwork is really, really cool. It's all hand-drawn, the animations are brilliant, it's a definitely a unique selling point. They've got all the good stuff like rifts, they've got PvP, events, tournaments, all this kind of stuff. And if you sign up just now using one of the links below for Android or iOS, and then you put this code into the global chat in the game within 24 hours, you will get a free epic hero and a bunch of stuff, and it really helps the channel. Thank you very much. So yeah, that's it. I mean, like I say, if you download it on the link below, I'll have that linked in the comments, and then you enter that I am steaming code, you'll get a bunch of free stuff, and it really helps the channel out. It's completely free to do. If you don't like it, just shelf it, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys will like it. Now, obviously, Raid's always going to be my number one game just now on this channel. It's what I do. I really enjoy the game, and because of this next video that's coming out, I'm going to enjoy it even more. But yeah, it's, it's always good to have something secondary to play as well, and I'm really quite enjoying it. And the combat mechanics are really, really in-depth. I mean, I'll do a bunch of videos on them in the coming sort of weeks and things like that so you can get a better idea of what's going on in the game. But once you really delve into it and you see the team building, the mechanics, very similar to Raid in that way, it's uh, very, very cool. Just a completely different art style, though. That's the only thing. So it might not appeal for everyone, but for myself, it's more like kind of Magic the Gathering or even like Elder Scrolls. Not nearly as many sort of fantasy monsters, just more like people and sort of medieval style. So I do quite like that. But anyway, let's get on with the video. So we've had this thing released today and it's super exciting. We go to the news. It is another What's Next in Raid video. Um, now, us as content creators got a little bit of a heads up in this, but apparently it was like leaked right away, um, which is quite funny. I don't know who leaked it, but um, the content creator chat's going mad. I missed it all. I was working. I thought I was getting back early, a couple of hours from work and before I got back it was all been released it's been leaked it's been published I was like okay well but I'm still gonna do a reaction video because I think it's really cool so let's load up the video and we'll just pause it at all the exciting bits so here it is I will link this below as well it's on Ray's official channel now it's been published to everybody um, we're just gonna play through it and I'll pause it at the bits I really want to talk about but there's loads of cool stuff to see in here so let's go through it right now Hey everyone, welcome to the new episode of What's Next in Raid. We promised to deliver these videos more frequently, so here we are with a short set of awesome features and updates you can look forward to in the near future. Let's dive in and see what we've got. First on the menu is a huge new update for the Doom Tower, the third rotation. As we've mentioned in one of our previous videos, there are three main rotations that we had planned for the Doom Tower. Two of them are in the game already, and here's the third. So what does a new rotation mean? More types of secret rooms, mixed up encounters for regular floors, and most importantly, two deadly new bosses. We'll be sure to cover them in a dedicated video closer to release, but we do have some cool details to share right now. The first boss is Bommel the Dreadhorn, a massive lava beast. 
If he doesn't look scary enough on his own, take a look at that nasty dread bombs he spawns. You can't kill them, you can't stop them, and they deal some serious damage when they go off. The only so how cool is this dude? Yeah, that was it. That's all I wanted to say. How cool is that dude? The only thing you do is freeze them to help cool off the burn a bit. He'll also have some tricks up his sleeve that affect the buffs and debuffs you use in battle. Let's just say you're going to want a team composition with good timing and a few explosives of your own if you don't want to end up getting blown to pieces. And while most of our Doom Tower bosses are monsters of varying levels of horrifying, the next challenger is something else entirely. Don't let that charming smile fool you though, she's just as vicious and dangerous as the rest of them. Introducing Astranix the Dark Fae. She has the unique ability to banish your champions, taking them out of the battle entirely. They won't take damage, but they won't be able to take turns either. At the same time, she'll create a mirror copy of your banished champion, and you can't get them back until you slay their double. If you're not careful, your strengths will become her strengths. Right, so that mechanic right there sounds absolutely awesome. That is definitely the most unique mechanic we've seen from a boss in Raid, from a boss in any sort of game of this, to be honest. Um, I always end up referencing Magic the Gathering, but it's because I played a lot of it. And there was actually a card I remember in that game that did a very similar thing when you were fighting the opposing team. You could just banish one of their creatures from the game completely and it was like an enchantment. And then once you killed the enchantment, it came back in. So it's a very similar idea to that, but to see it in a video game is super cool. Hopefully it works out pretty well, but you know, it's going to make you think if you put in a really, really strong champion and suddenly she banishes it and then she makes a carbon copy of it then you've got to fight that copy of your own champion um really really cool i'm excited to see her i think it's gonna be pretty difficult as well sounds like a hard one strengths if that wasn't bad enough some of this fairy queen's skills will gain additional advantages depending on the affinity setup of your champions you'll have to keep that in mind when building your team no matter how you approach it it'll be a tough fight so don't miss a more detailed boss breakdown video coming soon Okay, so that's what you're up against, but they've got some awesome stuff for you if you win. Both these bosses will drop new materials to craft two new artifacts at the forge. Defeating the Dreadhorn will get you Dreadhorn Plates, which you can use to forge Fortitude Artifacts. A two-piece Fortitude set offers a big boost to your defensive champions, 10% extra defense, and plus 40 to resistance. Meanwhile, the Dark Fae will get you Fae Spheres. You can use these to forge lethal artifacts. A four-piece set that ignores 25% of the enemy's defense and grants a nice plus 10% boost to crit rate on top. Right, so this is probably the two biggest power creeps I've seen in the game so far. Because um, Resistance and Savage are both... Well, Resistance falls in and out of the meta in terms of PvP, but it's, it's the only sort of set that does the job it's meant to do. Um, and it is just a two-piece set that adds 40 resistance. So suddenly... You've got the exact same piece, but it also gives you plus 10% defense. So that's a massive upgrade. You know, 10% is a huge amount. And it's still a two-piece set. So that set, in my eyes, is like the absolute number one piece for your defending champions in PvP now. It's an absolute beast of a set. And then, to top it off, they've just increased Savage, which is widely known in the game at the moment as like the number one damage dealing set. And they've just went and put 10% crit rate on it. And... It is still a four-piece set, but you know, the normal crit rate set only gives, I think it's 12%, is it? So this is like a huge upgrade. I mean, even just like plus 5% crit rate would have still been a massive upgrade. So this is a massive power creep. I guess it's always a bit confusing when stuff like this comes out. You always think, oh, maybe that's too much. But when you look at any game, power creep is always a thing. And it has to do that because the content gets harder. So you need better gear to do it. The only issue is... People that have farmed so much of the, you know, someone who's farmed so much Savage gear for ages and they've got the absolute best pieces will probably feel a little bit hard done by because it's suddenly outshined by all these pieces. But that is just part of these games, to be honest. So I'm actually quite excited about both of them, um, especially considering how bad some of the original Doom Tower gear was. Suddenly this makes me just want to play Doom Tower a lot more. Um, I mean, that's the only reason people do CVC is for reaction gear. So when this rotation's on and it's both these sets, I can see it being insanely busy. I'll be farming tons of this stuff, especially this lethal set here. Because um, I do farm the untouchable set. That's a really good set too. It's like an upgrade to immunity. But it's going to make it quite interesting, especially with the three rotations. Pop. But that's not all the new rewards we've got. There are some new champions you can summon with fragments from secret rooms in the Doom Tower, and they are freaking sweet. First off, everyone's favorite snarky elf gained another level in badass. 
If you're like the original Kyle, you'll love the buffed up, poison loving, epic version. The clan boss is going to be quaking in its mighty little boots. Ky right, wait a minute. Since when was he called Kyle? Was it not Kale? Like, I literally haven't heard anybody pronounce it as Kyle. I think Ray's just been uh, smirky here. That's ridiculous. I prefer Kale. I'm going to call him Kale. But Dark Kale looks awesome. Super cool artwork. We always expect that from them. But it's a really cool addition to the game. Um, and hopefully he's really good. Looks like he's going to be a clan boss monster. Uh, judging by the amount of poison things that are going on here, he's going to be laying tons of poisons I would hedge a bet at. Kyle won't be arriving alone. Right beside him is a powerful warrior clad in dragon scale armor. She'll hit hard and hit fast. So fast that her enemies will have a tough time hitting back. Finally, we've decided the bad guys deserve some love and settled on a new legendary for the demon spawn faction. This Right, just to quickly say, again, Raid blown out of the park here. Let's quickly skip back and look at this guy. He looks badass. He's got some like samurai shit going on in the bottom. Like lava, you know... Sauron type stuff on the top. Unbelievably cool artwork. I want this guy, 100%. On a new legendary for the Demon Spawn faction. This Burning Prince is all about fear and flames with a healthy dose of helping out his fellow Demon Spawn. So, that's the third rotation of the Doom Tower for you. But that's not all that's getting updated. We've said that expanding clan-related features is going to be one of our primary objectives in 2021, and we intend to keep that promise. Introducing... Clan Improvements, Volume 1. First of all, all clans will have a clan level now, which you can increase by completing different activities. Your clan's level will give you a bunch of different benefits, like increasing the silver you win from campaign stages and giving you a few extra multi-battle attempts every day. It'll also influence another huge part of clans, the clan shop. The clan shop will be brimming with awesome stuff you can get using clan gold. Clan gold will be earned from clan quests Right, just got to stop it here. This looks awesome. This is one of the things that should have been in the game like ages ago. It's creating a community. You know, we've created our own community through Discord. This game's blown out of proportions in terms of community. But if we've got like in-game community stuff, it just makes it so much better. Um, and what I can see here is some champion fragments and I can see it. And it's for Yannicka, who's an awesome champion. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, this is what we've been asking for for ages, this is a way to just get a rotating amount of different champions that come up on this screen, because Yannicka's a great champion, so if she's available with fragments right away, that alone is huge, and um, hopefully they don't lock it out in terms of whatever skill level your clan is, hopefully it's just accessible to every clan, as long as you save up that amount of points, and yeah, super excited about this, the only thing I did notice is you can get more auto battles from it, please just give us like auto battles all the time for free, Please, why not? I mean, it's not its not a resource, an auto battle. It literally isn't. It shouldn't be anyway. Um, just give us it all the time, please. It would be so much better. But that's just the start. In the future, we plan on having more ways to earn clan gold, clan XP, and all kinds of other cool clan stuff. But wait, I hear the attentive among you asking, what the heck are clan quests? Good catch. Clan quests are special missions you get every week. Offering clan gold and clan XP as rewards. However, they're going to take some teamwork and coordination to complete because only one clan member will be able to take on a given quest. You're going. Love this idea. This promotes, again, just communication between your clan, figuring out who's going to do what. I mean, let's have a look. Defeat 500 spiralings in the spiders, then wins only. Um, yeah, that seems fairly easy. I mean, they don't look really hard, to be honest. 50 increased attack buffs and tag team arena offense wins only. Um, upgrade three epic or legendary champions to rank five. So you could work out in your clan who's got the resources to do what specific quest, and yeah, just again, anything that promotes communication between all the players, something to work together. It's really cool. Um, they really need to get this sort of clan wars thing out, in my opinion. That's like the number one thing to try and make up for this horrendous CVC tournaments they've put out because uh, it's still left a sour note in a lot of players, and I've, I've seen a lot of players leave the game over it. And even like I mentioned earlier in this video, chatting with the Gemstone Legends team, they've got a Guild Wars coming out. And I'm not going to lie, guys, I don't know if I'm specifically allowed to say much about it, but it sounds amazing. It's so strategic. They've got like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything, but basically it's going to blow a lot of games out of the water in that respect. So Raid could do it so well and probably better because they've got the budget to do it. So I really hope they use something like this as a platform to push it into the next level, which would be you know, clan versus clan actual PvP or like, you know, just proper clan versus clan content where it takes a lot of strategic skill 
and timing and things like that to actually do it rather than just spending a ton of money. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's that kind of game. We don't mind spending a bit of money. We all play Raid. That's fine, but don't make it all about that. Um, I think that's going to be huge for this game, but this is a definitely uh, a step in the right direction. And again, for free-to-play players um, like myself on this other account that I'm doing, I, I mentioned it before, the CBC, as much as I hate it and it's toxic, when you're actually free to play, it's pretty good because you just get a bunch of resources for free. So I'm actually excited when it comes around and this just looks like more resources for doing stuff again. So super cool. I'm going to have to coordinate with your fellow clan members to work out who should take which quest and figure out the best strategy to complete them all. Like with the Doom Tower bosses, we'll publish a dedicated video breaking down the new clan features closer to release. Of course, we're not forgetting about quality of life improvements either. Many of you guys follow the gotta catch em all strategy when it comes to champions, and who can blame you? They look great in the collection for starters, and you never know when you'll need a specific skill set. Okay, there's some badass looking artwork again on here. Let's just go through quickly all these things. I mean, this is all new artwork we're seeing, so um, I'm guessing Demon Spawn for this one, maybe Undead Hordes. Uh, it looks really cool. Probably Undead Hordes, actually, judging by the total spiky chest thing. I'm sure we've seen that. It's got like four arms and shit by the looks of it. Um, I've got a big dagger sticking through our heart. Um, although that picture is a little bit risque for Raid. Who can blame you? They look great in the This one here looks to me like I can actually get it. Could be a barbarian this or something. Really, really cool champion again. But she's got some kind of robot stuff going on. Or potentially a samurai because... Yeah, actually no, that's probably going to be Shadowkin. I'm talking absolute rubbish. That's definitely Shadowkin. I'm assuming Demon Spawn for this one, definitely. He looks pretty badass. He's got an insanely big back. Um, he's got must be carrying some weight. He wouldn't be very good in battle without a bunch of weight on the back of him. And then this looks like a Lady Dwarf, if I'm not mistaken. Um, really cool again. Love the armor. Looks super cool. And lastly, oh, we didn't actually see this one. I think that's, yeah, that could be a number of things. Barbarians, you know, Sacred Order maybe. You just never know. That looks a little bit like Splinter from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but like much darker. <laughs> That's kind of what popped into my head. Uh, yeah, really cool. Raid do this well all the time. Faster than you can say, summon rush. But don't worry, we're planning to add another 100 slots to the champion collection so you can get some more room to breathe. While we're at it, we'll also increase inbox space by 100 slots to make sure you don't miss out on anything you've earned. Still, don't let it overfill. And speaking of catching them all, it's a long journey, and we know it means you're likely to hit a duplicate champion or two along the way. But don't worry, we'll also be releasing a solution for that too. Ooh. We're still hammering out the final details before we're ready to unveil everything. But what we can say right now is that it's not going to be a one-stop solution. We're going to provide multiple short-term and long-term uses for your duplicate champs. We'll give you the full lowdown very soon, but we just wanted to say the feedback you guys provided has been essential in shaping our approach here, and we think you're really going to like it. So that's not news. That's exactly the same thing they've said for ages. So yeah, we don't know still. We have no idea about the dupe system. Um, yeah. I mean, the last thing they said was they were going to be doing this increase a champion thing, which is a horrendous idea. You know, upgrade a champion, sorry, use a dupe to upgrade that champion is a dupe um so that's the last information we've got to go on and they're saying we'll really like it um so i'm assuming they've changed that because they must have seen the feedback about that because it was awful so i'm taking that as they've changed it um i kind of like the idea that they seem to have a few different options for it rather than one stop you know you've got long-term and short-term solutions to do it so hopefully if if you give people choices that's always a good thing you know if you force people all to use one specific thing that's going to benefit some people and others not so much so i do like the idea that they're they're talking about different things but still none the wiser i thought we were getting it there but oof. no i'm afraid not okay one last thing to wrap this up a balance change We've looked at the decreased critical damage to buff and decided it wasn't performing as well as we had hoped. So there's a change incoming. Rather than provide a flat decrease, it will lower the target's critical damage by 25% of the stat. That means a champion with 200% crit damage will go down to 150% instead of 175%. We hope that will make the debuff more useful both in PvE and PvP battles. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that wasn't like that from the start, to be honest, because, yeah, that that anyone that actually plays the game could have sort of predicted that, because a lot of people, well, 
basically everyone that's any good at the game is running like 250 plus crit damage. So if you're taking 25 off that, you're suddenly like 225. Or if you're like 300 crit damage, 275 crit damage is still going to blow you to pieces. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure why that wasn't like that to begin with. But yeah, it's fixed, so that's fine. And that's it for today, folks. Don't forget to press the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. There's much bigger stuff coming, and we hope to showcase it in the future. Happy. Tell us now, Hydra. I want to hear about Hydra. Thought the Hydra was coming in this one, but no, unfortunately not. So there's some pretty good stuff in there. Let's just jump out of this and back on the account. So yeah, some really cool information. Maybe not quite as much as I expected. I thought we were maybe going to hear something about Hydra, something about Clan Wars I was really hoping for. Now, I know we had some really cool stuff in there, and I love all that stuff about the, you know, the clan stuff, the the quests and all that, but you know, it's, not a, it's not a massive update. Let's be brutally honest. That's kind of little changes. Um, it's not an actual new content. Um, I think they just really need to push forward with this clan versus clan thing. Um, and get like a clan wars thing sorted because this is just yeah I don't I keep, I keep saying two different stories really because for free to play I quite like it but it's not fun it's boring it's not like interesting content I'd love something where it's more strategic and skill based and working together um, even if it's a little bit of pay to win it and that's fine but you know much more of the strategic and skill based in it and um, similar to building like clan boss teams and stuff like that that's really fun so if you had to do something like that but where you're able to compete with actual people rather than just against uh, pve stuff it would be incredible and this game would just skyrocket to the next level i'm sure you all agree with me but anyway guys i'm blabbing on now please leave in the comments below what you thought of this next in raid video i i enjoyed it they do it really well they're so good at advertising you know they they get the guy, that's like the guy from the movies that says, this next movie is coming, number four. So, I mean, they're, they're obviously paying the, the right people to do the right advertising stuff. Um, they do it better than anyone. So it always gets us hyped. Really cool to see it just now. Shame that somebody leaked it. Uh, I'm not sure who it was, but I'm sure um, at some point someone will find out about it. But anyway, guys, that is the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for the next Free to Plat series actual video coming out because I had to interrupt it with this one. It's probably going to come out in the next five or six hours, so just stay tuned for it. And have a great day, guys. Peace.